what's up guys so basically I'm just gonna do a quick rundown give my opinions and just get this done with so basically just in the last day or so there's been a lot going on number one many of you might know if you follow this show a lot one of the things I like to do for fun other than politics is I like to watch sports I'm a football fan I'm a baseball fan I'm a basketball fan I like the Giants, baseball. I like the Niners and the Chargers, football. I like the Kings and the Lakers, basketball. And on occasion, when they, you know, every once in a while, I will watch the Warriors, but wouldn't consider myself a fan. My personal thing, bitch about it all you want in the comments. But, um, basically, the Chargers, as it was announced as of the 12th of January, uh, the Spanos family has decided to move the Chargers back to Los Angeles. This would be the first time in 56 years that the Chargers have played in L.A. They played their first season in L.A. before eventually settling in Balboa Park in uh, San Diego, which then later they ended up uh, getting a stadium in um, along I-5, so they ended up playing out at Qualcomm Stadium for a number of years. But Qualcomm is aging, and just like any timeless giant, it's eventually time to move on. And for years, the Chargers have been trying to get a new stadium to no avail. Essentially, people debate back and forth whether the city gave up on them, whatever the case was, or whether it was an issue of big money. Either way, the Chargers are now going to, the San Diego Chargers will now become the Los Angeles Chargers. The Wikipedia page is officially changed as of this morning, and the trademark basically was put into effect last year. I mean, basically, when you file a trademark, it's pretty much for certain that you will move. The decision had to be made by the 15th. They made it three days earlier than expected. It's not really unexpected to me that the Chargers have decided to move to Los Angeles. I've seen it coming. Got my own L.A. Chargers shirt back in June because I knew it was going to be coming. I kind of, in a way, don't really have feelings one way or the other about it. I am sad that they couldn't stay in San Diego, but they're still in California. They're still a SoCal team, and frankly, I just am enjoying watching my fellow, char my fellow Chargers fans lose their shit just because, you know, all over a stupid football team. It's like, okay, it's number one, it's football. Number two, they're not moving to Istanbul. They're moving to L.A. two hours away. You know, yeah, I know for some people that's an issue because, you know, traffic and travel and all that sort of BS. It's like, again, they're still in your area. You just have to travel a little bit farther, you know. I just think that there's a very bourgeois concept to that. Um, I mean, the whole institution of football is a bourgeois concept, but whatever. Um, I think it's also really interesting <laughs> to note that, you know, people are bitching because, you know, they're saying that, um, you know, they, they think that they've, they, they, people are just bitching about all sorts of things about this and saying that they're going to burn their jerseys and look for a te another team to root for. It's like, why? Just because your team's moving? Need I remind you what happened when the Raiders moved from Oakland to L.A. back in the 70s and 80s and then came back in the 90s, you know, to Oakland? I mean, do you remember how many pissed off people there were in each of those cities and how the Raiders are most likely going to go to Vegas? So there's that. What about, what about when the Niners moved from San Francisco to Santa Clara? Yeah, not too far, and yes, they kept the San Francisco name, but it still pissed off a lot of people, you know. And it's not the first time a team has relocated. I mean, again, just last year, the Rams relocated from St. Louis back to Los Angeles. Sure, there was a lot of pissed off St. Louis fans. Essentially, I'm basically just talking about this whole issue because I woke up to it this morning and people were bitching. All right, but moving on from football, um, there is political talk to be discussed, and essentially, um, Planned Parenthood has been 
defunded by the incoming Republican Party in dominating Congress. A Obamacare, as many people know, has effectively been wiped out, otherwise known as the Affordable Care Act. I want to let people know on that the Affordable Care Act and the Obamacare are the same thing. Obamacare was just a really bourgeois term to describe the Affordable Care Act. So all these people that are bitching because, you know, their health care is now being taken away, it's like, well, you were the one that voted for it. So, yeah. The biggest problem with um, the AFA, or the ACA, um, sorry, the ACA uh, being repealed is that it does, you know, is that there's also a lot of other things that have come around to it. There's been a lot of deregulation of this healthcare shit. So people like myself now find myself without health care. And the problem is, is that I can't really afford it. It's kind of one of the benefits of actually having, you know, a universal health, a needed universal health care system. And yes, what do did I agree? Do I agree with the ACA? No, I think it was rudely bourgeois and blatantly corporatocratic. But you know that's capitalism. But the point is, is that I need health care. I cannot stay under my, you know, I can't stay under my authority figure's health care because I could only stay up to that till twenty six. And now with all this, even if I could, I can't because of this. You know, I don't work enough. I don't make enough money or hours to work enough. But of course, that doesn't matter to Trump supporters who basically think, who have a labor, a labor secretary who basically believes that workers are just fucking lazy and don't need breaks and don't need to, that basically, Basically, they should work themselves into a fucking grave working 90 hours a week, you know, just to, you know, make, what, a mediocre salary and maybe, maybe be able to afford health care? No. So that's it. And then it's also the issue with uh, the Planned Parenthood issue. The Congress is going after Planned Parenthood. And this is an issue with a lot of, with the women's rights issue, so... It doesn't really need to be said as much because it's already been said in previous videos. But essentially, essentially, my whole stance on it, my whole stance is on this. This is exactly why there's a need to basically stand up against this sort of crap and to basically fight back against it. What can be done is states' rights. States still have the right to implement their own health care policies and their own sort of policies regarding Planned Parenthood and everything else. So if the government, if the federal government wants to defund it, then the individual Planned Parenthoods that are in, that are still being run under certain states could still be funded. New York is already trying to uh, implement Fund funding for Planned Parenthood and for health care. I also expect this to happen in California, which, um, frankly, I think should begin to happen. In fact, if anything in California, California should have the largest funding for Planned Parenthood and the largest funding for health care. One, I just would like them to do it, just in general, just to piss off Trump and, you know, the entire people of Congress. And not only that, it's just a, you know, good little thing for a California independence movement, you know, to basically be like, yeah, we just, you know, this is the, the first step in basically saying fuck you to the rest of the United States. So, yeah, Th that's just personal opinion. Essentially, it's fight fire with fire. If they're going to throw the, you know, throw this in our faces, we throw something back in return, something called state sovereignty. So, ultimately, that's what I really wanted to talk about. I just wanted to get these out of the way because, you know, it's going to become big, a big issue in the coming months. And since we're about one week away from um, America being dominated by um, their fear, Mr. Trump, 
I kind of feel like, you know, this is my way of kind of laughing in everybody's faces, saying, this is what w was going to happen. This is what we told you was going to happen. And yet, some of you decided to support him anyway. You decided to support this, the bourgeois system's ideal, and this is what you get. And now, there's a lot of people bitching because, well, now they're without health insurance. You get what you deserve. And a lot of people out there, I want to say this before I go, a lot of people out there saying, you know, I want Trump to succeed because, you know, saying you want him to fail is like having the pilot crash the plane. Well, I'm perfectly fine standing back with a tub of popcorn in my hand and watching it fucking burn. Sorry, not sorry. I'm Nora Kalnick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and I stand with Planned Parenthood and for health care. And this has been Nora Cal Corner.